Tanzania's Serengeti, home for millions of wild creatures. Few humans have witnessed this spectacle of life, yet one man, Baron Hugo van Lawick, has made this home for more than 25 years, recording the wildlife drama around him. A life's ambition, Van Lawick followed the great migration of wildebeest for over a year. He has captured on film scenes that stir our emotions and may be difficult for some to watch. Images of tragedy and of triumph as the herd advances through a gauntlet in a struggle for survival. Join us now, and through the eyes of one of the world's great wildlife filmmakers, witness an African epic as we journey with the Great Wildebeest Migration. There is no other animal on earth that looks quite like the wildebeest. With its shaggy beard and broad, flat muzzle, it appears to have been made from spare parts of other animals. The front quarters could have come from an ox, the hind quarters from an antelope, and the mane and tail from a horse. The antics of the territorial bulls during breeding season have earned them the nickname Clowns of the Savanna. On this edition of Explore the Wildlife Kingdom, we visit the Serengeti Mara in Tanzania to witness the largest gathering of animals anywhere on Earth. Reminiscent of the great buffalo herds of early American history, the wildebeest herd now stands as the largest in the world. Join us for the Great African Migration. As far as the eye can see, wildebeests have amassed in giant herds on these East African plains. They have come as participants in the greatest migration of land mammals on the planet. Now they must head south. The heavy rains have arrived and will turn the soil into dense mud. Over a million and a half animals start the long and hazardous trek toward better pastures. Many have made this trip before. For the young, this may be their first journey. For others, it could be their last. Those fortunate to make the crossing still have many miles to go. <laughs> the migration takes place within the two East African countries of Kenya and Tanzania. With the onset of heavy rains, 
the herds depart Kenya's Maasai Serengeti's boundary. Serengeti's boundaries were drawn around their route and along with adjoining regions totals over 18,000 square miles. The Serengeti Mara ecosystem. Through this zone they will travel more than 500 miles before their journey ends. The vast landscape of Serengeti's short grass plains are preferred to the wooded north country. There is ample room for many animals to congregate and little undergrowth to obscure predators. The grass is green and rich in calcium from the volcanic earth beneath it. And so they come. The wildebeest population has grown in recent years from around 200,000 animals in 1961 to over one and a half million today. Such numbers place a huge burden squarely on the back of a particular beetle. Dung beetles process over eight million pounds of manure a day, fertilizing Serengeti's soil which might otherwise become a giant dung heap, or quite possibly, a desert. Hyenas pose the biggest threat to wildebeest calves. But here, too, live other enemies. It is February, and after a gestation period of about eight months, females begin to give birth in what is one of the most extraordinary reproductive designs in nature. In just three weeks, over 80% of all wildebeest calves will be born for the year. A strategy against predators, the sudden mass delivery is overwhelming and ensures that many young will survive. can walk within five minutes of birth and will run as fast as its mother within two weeks. Sometimes running seems easier than just standing. All of the activity attracts attention and a silverback jackal brazenly enters a group of calving females. It's a rude awakening for the newborn calf, but the jackal's nerve far outweighs his danger.
tension mounts as the situation begins to escalate. The mother is able to fend off the jackals, but becomes nervous and agitated at the approach of two hyenas. There is little that the mother can do now, but stand and watch. Female wildebeests can actually postpone delivery for at least an hour if there are predators in the area. Although only two of three will reach adulthood, the herd size soon grows by nearly 500,000 newborn. The Serengeti is also home to the African wild dog. Highly social, they form territories here and will not tolerate the unwelcome presence of hyenas near their pups. Renowned for their superb hunting skills, wild dogs will almost always bring down their prey. Though on the Serengeti, nothing is certain. This remarkable sequence captures a rare turn of events. A female and her calf are first separated from the herd. The pack is determined to get at the calf. Though only a week old, it can already run 20 miles an hour. Unable to outrun the dogs, the two turn and face their attackers. The calf fights to stay close to its mother, the only defense, while she does her best to hold off the pack. For a moment, it appears that the struggle will soon be over. Wild dogs are known to easily bring down larger prey, and such difficulty with a small animal is unexpected. For nearly half an hour, the unrelenting onslaught continues. Until, finally, the exhausted dogs call off the attack. The laws of nature are at times unpredictable. And here, on the plains of the Serengeti, a mother wildebeest and her weak old calf almost certainly doomed to die, have now become victorious.
and for the wild dogs. There may be no food tonight, but there is sure to be another hunt. May is the start of the dry season. The green grass has ceased to grow, and the herds begin to move north by northwest. Calves are often separated from their mothers along the way. They stand little chance on their own. Sometimes, the best defense is to take the offense. Unless it can find its mother, more attacks will likely follow. Desperate, orphans will approach anything that moves, like Thompson's gazelle or even lions. Mothers may search for missing calves for days, but only hers will be allowed to nurse. Not all newborn are as fortunate. Although the mother calls, her calf can never follow. Born with shortened limbs, it has inherited a will to survive. In response to her appeal, the calf will try to keep up. Death from old age is rare on the Serengeti. Remarkably, some live out their 25 years. But the young and old, the fit and the infirm, all are bid farewell by a ragtag group of scavengers. An assembled lot of undertakers that glean life from death and leave a small, worn patch on the land. It is June now, and the tropical sun beats down unrelentingly. It bakes the earth and turns fertile soil to dust and Eden into a desolate landscape. A dry wind declares that the rains have gone for good and swallows once cool watering holes. The plains have been grazed bare and the herd must move on. They rest little now, but travel both night and day in their search for life-giving grasses, covering more than 10 miles in a single day. They pass silent sentinels of ancient rock monoliths and on to the tall grasses of the fertile Northwest. A spectacular sight, made more so by the thought that not long ago, bison roamed the plains of North America in herds more than 20 times this size. The bulls, 
now begin what is called the rut. Males three years and older begin to round up groups of females for mating. They battle and often perform bizarre displays in their efforts to attract the cows. Up to 16 females may be herded into each bull's territory. Many move from one group to another, ensuring a high rate of pregnancy. Food and water are the only priorities above reproduction. But a drink of water can sometimes carry a high price. The powerful lioness attempts to suffocate her catch, a 500-pound bull, in a timeless embrace between predator and prey. During the migration, lion prey heavily on the herd as it moves through their established territories. Stampedes often leave injuries and are the biggest cause of calf separations from their mothers. Like one giant, heaving organism, they roll over the land, trampling the grass beneath their hooves. Wildebeests are curious creatures and will investigate other animals like these woolly-necked storks. With the rains now gone, once clear pools slowly turn to mud. Though lion often frequent these sites, now there appears no threat and the mother can wait for her calf to follow. But once free of the morass, a danger still exists. The sun bakes the mud into a shell and can cause death. The herd enters the tall grasslands of Serengeti's west country, escorted by the ever-present hyena. Their arrival has been awaited for months. For here live great numbers of a formidable adversary. Serengeti's bush country, where feudal lords still rule the land. 
Many of Serengeti's 1,500 lion live here. The young are fortunate this time. The lioness has chosen a larger meal. Zebra are also prey to lions. They travel with the herds and feed on rough grass stems, a plant food disliked by the wildebeest. They press on, mile after mile, as if drawn by some ancient will to cross the farthest horizon. Lion have fed again during the night. But cheetahs wait until dawn to begin their hunt. There can be little defense against the hunting skills of a mature cheetah mother. Birds like the cattle egret and wattled starling feed on insects drawn to the herd. Others, like the African ground hornbill, must avoid a million hooves Wildebeests move swiftly through densely overgrown areas and narrow passageways, stopping just long enough to quench their thirst. The sea of tall grass is like shark-infested waters. A predator surfaces nearby, and it's too late to run. A few calves are born along the migratory route. And while the deep underbrush may help to conceal them against predators, the herd is moving quickly now. The chance is high 
that these calves will become separated from their mothers. And without a mother's milk, lost newborn will soon become dehydrated and too weak to carry on. Some animals are brought down by a minute killer. Fly larvae can burrow up nasal passages into the brain and destroy the animal's coordination. Leopards prey on the herd as well and will drag their kills into the trees. Elephant, too, migrate in search of food and water, but pay little heed to wildebeests along the way. Water cabbages grow atop a pond where wildebeests have come to drink. Uh -huh. Beneath the vegetation live unexpected occupants. The hippopotamus is a territorial creature. spending the day in water to protect their skin from the hot sun and emerging at night to feed on land. Within their group, fierce battles are fought for dominance. But against a wildebeest, they bear no grudge. They flow over the land like water, fearful of the unseen. A river of panic, driven by the constant threat of death. But the dry earth raises a veil and foils any chance of attack. Three weeks have passed since it began, during a full moon, and now the rut is almost over. As the migration advances, males continue to fight over territory along the way. Their title consists of little more than a plot of land and themselves but without it, they cannot attract females for mating. Challenges are merely ritual posturing and rarely lead to injury.
the earth has become extremely dry. But in Eden lies just ahead. A paradise. A place shared by many. An oasis amid the turmoil. The Grumeti River is a year-round source of water on which the migration can count. But here, too, lies a foe beyond compare. Giant crocodiles have made this river their home. And for the wildebeests, the only fate worse than daring a drink from this river is their need to cross it. Hundreds of Nile crocodiles live along this section of the river. Some of them are monsters, 20 feet long. But the wildebeests have gone without water for almost five days now. They must drink or die of thirst. Small crocs try for young calves. And still, they must drink. But it is the adult wildebeests that have caught the eye of the more skilled hunters. The massive reptile carries its prey into deeper water. Like submarines under power, other crocodiles quickly make their way toward the scene. And clearly, there is no escape. The crocodiles have come to know the favored watering sites of the herds and feed there often.
but the urge to drink is overwhelming. So too is the urge to migrate north. But the first one makes it across. And then another, and another. The fertile feeding grounds of the Mara lay to the north, and not even the chance of being taken by crocodiles is enough to stop them now. Nine months have passed, and the herds are within days of reaching their final destination. Through forests and bushland, they pass under the watchful gaze of the lofty Maasai giraffe. Achaea scrub provides only some relief after the wide open plains. The journey has taken its toll on many. A resident honey badger leaves his den to forage and inspects the passing throng. Hyenas are never far behind. They follow the migration and, as predators, are as much a part of it as are the prey. Joined in a dark, primeval ballet. For a time, some of the herd will move outside the park and nearer the influence of man. Though wildfires can occur naturally, today farmers and herders set them annually to clear their land of dead wood and grass and stimulate new growth. Flames know no boundaries and may burn unchecked through the parklands during the driest months. And with the rains, new growth will come and the herds can soon reap the benefit of fire. They are drawn to the sound of thunder and the sight of rain clouds more than 40 miles away.
one final river to cross, and the grasses will be theirs. The cycle will be complete. The will of the herd prevails, though in the final rush, many are injured or killed. One atop the other, they climb. Some will not make it. Broken bodies lay strewn along the riverbank. Others left immobile in shock. But for the lucky ones and the strong, they have arrived. On the plains of the Serengeti, a family of remarkable creatures moves to the rhythms of the earth. And we humans stand in awe and marvel at the sight. The wildebeest migration is a spectacle of life unequaled anywhere in the wild. Their search for food takes them on a trek across the Serengeti every year. And while they face difficulties along the way, the wildebeest herd always completes its great African migration while birthing an incredible half a million young. Join us again for another edition of Explore the Wildlife Kingdom as we journey into the kingdom of creation, a place where nature tells its own story and reveals to us wildlife's incredible design.